Thank you very much for coming. I now introduce to you the mayor of Brockton, Bill Coppender. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to open uh, by telling you that I am extremely pleased that within the past hour, the Plymouth County Superior Court has reaffirmed my authority under Chapter 61A to appoint an interim chief of police for the city of Brockton, and that's what I'm here to do today. Yes. I will tell you that this is the first step in a series of events that will lead to Chief Bob Hayden continuing to lead the Brockton Police Department. And I ask everyone in this room to please join me Tuesday night at 6 o'clock in City Council Chambers when the City Council's Ordinance Committee will consider an ordinance that would allow me to appoint a civilian commissioner of police. I need everyone's support. We need Bob Hayden to lead the Brockton Police Department. I need your support to get that ordinance passed through the council. So please be there on Tuesday night. And before we get to the statements, I would like to take just a moment. We have so many uh, honored guests from the world of law enforcement here from the federal, state, county, and local level. And I don't have the ability to mention all of you, so please, anyone I omit, uh, I apologize, but I, I do want to highlight at least a few of our special guests here. Uh, representing the Plymouth County District Attorney is the Deputy Second District Attorney for Plymouth County. Tom Flanagan is here with us today. We have retired Judge Paul Heffernan is here with us today. Thank you, Your Honor, for being here. We have several sheriffs, several sheriffs with us here today. First, the retired sheriff of Plymouth County, Peter Flynn, is here today. We also have the sheriff of Bristol County, Tom Hodgson, along with Plymouth County Sheriff and our friend here in the city of Brockton, Joe McDonald, is here with us today. We have the um, ATF Special Agent in Charge, Ross Marchetti, is with us along with Special Agents Robert White, Michael Turner, and Alexander Schmidt representing ATF here for us this afternoon. <laughs> representing the United States Secret Service is Dawn McGrail. Also here with us, we have Special Agent in Charge, Bruce Focart. I hope I got that right, Bruce. Bruce Focart from <clears throat> Homeland Security Investigations out of Boston. Thank you for being here. We also, at the state level, have the Director of Reentry and Reemployment in the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development, Paul, uh, sorry, David Sullivan is here with us today. And we have, we have a large number of police chiefs here with us in attendance showing their support for Chief Hayden today. And I, I thank all of the police chiefs for being here and in particular want to recognize uh, that both the President and the Vice President of the Plymouth County Chiefs of Police are here with us. President Michael Mix, Chief of Hanson, along with Vice President Phil Tavares, Chief of Marshfield, are here with us today. And I know, I, I believe I saw at least a couple of city councilors, and I want to acknowledge them and thank them for being here. Uh, Councilor at Large Shana Barnes is here with us today. And Councilor at Large Moses Rodriguez is also here with us today. Thank you, Councilors, for being here. I'm, I'm here to work with the Council. At this time, I do want to uh, introduce a couple of special guests to make a few remarks. Uh, my first guest is the former mayor of the city of Lawrence. Uh, she had a chief of police by the name of Bob Hayden who served under her, and I'm, I'm hoping I get to share that honor with her. Would you please welcome the former mayor of Lawrence, Mary Claire Kennedy. Yeah. I'm delighted to be here in Brockton with all of you today. It's a special day for your city and I'm happy to share it with you. It's truly your lucky day when you have a man of Bob Hayden's caliber to come here and work with all of you and lead the police department. I don't think there's a more important job in a city than the police chief because his job and his performance has a direct effect on the quality of life here. Everyone wants to feel safe in their city. You want to feel safe at home, you want to feel safe 
um, when you're out walking the streets, when you're doing your shopping, when you're going to the movies, you want your kids to be safe at school. And it takes a strong leader like Bob Hayden to um, supervise the police department and to show them exactly what needs to be done to give you that feeling of safety and comfort that you want in an urban area. So I'm delighted to be here. I don't think that Mayor Carpenter could have picked a better man for the job. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here in the next year or two as you realize just how big a difference he can make when he works with neighborhood groups and the business community and city councilors and elected officials and other members of the law enforcement community because when everybody works together, that's when things get done and that's when you see a big improvement. So congratulations, Mayor, and congratulations to all of you and congratulations, Bob. Thank you, Mayor Kennedy. Now, is, is Larry Ellison here or not here? No. He's not here. Okay. So, uh, I would like, it, it's my very distinct honor to introduce this, this next gentleman to you, who uh, really does not uh, require an introduction, uh, but I'm so pleased uh, that he has taken the time to come down to the city of Brockton to be here with us today. He's the former mayor of the city of Boston and also the former U.S. ambassador to the Vatican. Would you please welcome Mayor Ray Flynn. Thank you, Mayor. What a, what a privilege it is to be with all of you here today in City Hall here in Brockton, a city that I'm quite familiar with having coached down here, Stonehill College, both ba basketball and baseball. So I know the city and I know many of its people has a great historic tradition. This is one of the most extraordinary appointments, think about it, I think there is in the United States for a city going through so much, every city, going through so much transition and change uh, to hire an experienced professional who is trusted, who is compassionate, and who understands people and respects people. That's what this appointment is all about, Mayor, and like Mayor Kennedy, I congratulate you for having the courage to uh, make this appointment of Bobby Hayden. Bobby Hayden is not uh, a show horse, he's a work horse. He's somebody that when you need something done, and I see a number of Boston police officers here today that I work very closely with and work very closely with Bobby. Doesn't that really say who Bobby Hayden is? Yes. That they come yeah. all the way down here and they took the time to share in this great moment for the city of Brockton, the city of champions, but they also are here to show their, their support for this professional Boston police officer, now the chief of police of the city of Brockton, formerly the police commissioner of, of uh, city of Lawrence. Bobby brings a unique talent, a special character, uh, characteristic of a, uh, of a professional. I'll tell you, uh, if, when, when I was given this invitation to come down here, I thought about it and I said, you know, if I were, uh, uh, if I were, if I were a law-abiding, decent person, in the city of, Bo uh, city of Brockton, Bobby Hayden would be the guy that I'd want to have as police commissioner. <laughs> on, the, on the other hand, if, 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 if I were... <laughs> on the other hand, if I were a criminal and who wanted to disrupt people's lives and to, 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 to deny them their freedoms and their liberties, Bob, you couldn't have had, you couldn't have a more serious adversity than, 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 Bobby, than Bobby Hayden. He's a person who is uh, determined, professional, compassionate, relentless. Uh, so, Mayor, um, congratulations on this appointment. Uh, I, I know the people of Brockton. I think I know a little bit about their concerns and their needs. And uh, Bobby is exactly what the, what the doctor has prescribed for this city, I believe. My last point to you, Mayor, a uh, bit of advice. Don't run marathons, the Boston Marathon, with <laughs> Bobby Hayden. I ran several marathons with him, and just as we approached Heartbreak Hill, this most notorious hill that if you can make the top of it, you've really achieved something, Bobby would say, look at me running alongside me and say, Mayor, this is great. This is great. We're approaching Heartbreak Hill. 
just think, just think, you know, once we get to the top, we're, we're heading down, we're, we're going to be doing well. And, uh, and he said, what we want to do going up the hill is running, run a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are aching. You know, I, I don't know what, what I'm going to do, whether or not I can make it. His advice, don't take his advice about marathon. When times get tough, he says, work harder, run faster. Great advice, I think. Mayor, congratulations to the people of Brockton. You've got a great police commissioner. I just want you to know that from my experience as mayor of Boston. Uh, Bobby was there for all the tough assignments. He's professional, he's loyal, he's compassionate, and he will work with anybody. My last point, I swear. <laughs> Take I, time, I remember the Boston Common was one of the most notorious places of crime and drug, inf drug uh, inf infested areas of the city. And this is the oldest park in North America. And this place where people frequented. I often went there with my mother when I was a little kid, my aunt. And it was, it was being denied law abiding people in the city of Boston because of drug dealing and uh, unsavory group of people hanging out there. And here's what I asked Bobby to do right after I was elected mayor. I says, Bobby, go in and clean that place up for me. And not only did he clean the place up, but he did something I'll, I'll share with you that I thought was one of the most extraordinary events in my whole life. He got the people who were selling the drugs, and he put them in jail. But the kids, the people who were taking the drugs, he got them into halfway houses. Nice. Isn't that something? Yeah. That's Bobby Hayden. That's your new police commissioner. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor Flynn. And I guess that's good news for the families that are looking forward to using DW Field Park this summer. It's going to be clean and safe, and you're going to be able to bring your family there. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, please uh, call up to the front Chris Larson uh, to uh, administer the oath of office to our incoming Chief of Police, Bob Hayden. Right hand and repeat after me. I, Bob Hayden, I, Bob Hayden, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and will support the Constitution thereof, and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Bob Hayden, I, Bob Hayden, do solemnly swear and affirm, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as the interim Brockton Police Chief. All the duties incumbent on me as the interim Brockton Police Chief. According to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, and understanding, and understanding, according, uh, agreeably to the rules and regulations, agreeably to the rules and regulations, of the Constitution, of the Constitution, and the laws of this Commonwealth, and the laws of this Commonwealth, and the revised ordinances and, of the City of Brockton, and the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton. So help me God. So help me God. I, Bob Hayden. I, Bob Hayden. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> takes the microphone, it is uh, my distinct honor and privilege as the mayor of the city of Broughton to present our new chief with his badge. Wow, that's all I can say for a start. Um, someone from the Broughton Enterprise interviewed me about a half an hour ago and they asked me what is the feeling that I had in um, this day. 
and I said, honored and humbled. And that's true. It's a tremendous honor to be the police chief in this city, which, by the way, has probably some of the greatest cops in the Commonwealth. When I was uh, meeting the mayor in the lawyer's building, I'd hear a siren, and being an old policeman, you look to the window, you look to what's going by, and I saw, you know, over the hour or two that we were there, I'd see five or six cruisers, one-man cars, blue lights, racing to a call. And I knew how that person in that car felt. Might have been a female officer. They were by themselves. Their heart rate was going up. They didn't know if they'd actually get killed or not going to that call. And I empathized with them. And I want to come here and make their job safer. I want to, some of the strategies I have are going to do that. Um, I don't have a prepared speech, so I'll just go as I usually do. I want to knock down a rumor that's going, it's a pretty bad rumor about me, Mr. Mayor, and I, I oh, he thinks it's funny. <laughs> There's a rumor going around this city that has to be addressed. There's a rumor going around this city about me that I'm uh, 72 years old. That's not true. <laughs> I, I will not be 72 until this April. <laughs> Another thing I saw in the Boston Globe today, a great article, uh, was that I have cancer. I wish somebody had told me that. <laughs> it's probably what all those pains are. It's not going to get in my way. I've got a little... I, yeah. Someone asked me, what are you going to say when people ask you have cancer, if you have cancer? And what I was going to say back was, that's true. We better get started right away. <laughs> that's how I feel. I want to thank uh, all the different police officers that came out here for me. The Lawrence police came down in their cruisers. And uh, without anyone getting uh, upset about it, I asked them if they saw any of those uh, bad guys that we all don't like to maybe put them in the back and take them away to Lawrence. <laughs> um, before I go on, and I won't go too long, I want to ask for your prayers for a police officer. The Boston guys know him well. He's a legend. His name is Mark DeLuca. Mark DeLuca was, uh, wanted to be the police chief here. He would have been the best. He would have been the best. And I would have been on that side of the table watching him. He was injured in a horrific motorcycle crash about seven months ago, and he's very, very slowly getting better. And um, today his children are here, Mark, Matthew, Zach, Rachel, and Allie. And I just wanted the boss, I wanted everyone to say a prayer for him and um, remember him uh, as he's slowly, excruciatingly, slowly getting better. He will make a comeback. I know him. He's, he's just the toughest person I've ever met and the most compassionate and he'll be back. It's going to take a little while. Um, some of my experiences in Boston, I think, developed my law enforcement philosophy, which is cities and communities are made for good people, dads, moms, people that like to use playgrounds, people that like to take their little boy or girl out and hit a baseball too or throw a frisbee. They're not made, they're not, they're not places where we're to be intimidated. Uh, where parts of the city we get nervous walking around where we worry if our kids are five minutes late and they're not home, and we were uncomfortable. And that was reinforced to me when I was in Boston. Uh, when I was in Boston with uh, Commissioner Hussey, who was then a lieutenant, I believe, and I was a deputy superintendent, the mayor put us into Roxby to try to dis disrupt the gang problem they were having there. And I'm thinking, that is, uh, is Superintendent Myrna here? Bobby here? No. Uh, I think the year that we went there, there might have been 152 murders in the city. Absurd. And uh, Jim Hussey and I were in the middle of it with all of our men, plain clothes, and we were, Jimmy was driving the car. We're driving down the street, kids are out, it's getting, I think it was dusk, kids are out playing and having fun, 
And as we drove down this street, I don't remember the name of it, I looked at a little girl about 10 feet from me, sitting on a hydrant, I'm sorry, sitting on a uh, mailbox. <coughs> Our eyes locked for a second. They all knew we were cops. She smiled, she was about 12 years old. She smiled and uh, nodded and I smiled. And I thought to myself, what a beautiful little girl. And we went about another block when we heard the gunfire. And that was kind of common back there then. And Jimmy and I both heard it at the same time. And Jimmy made a U-turn. And at that moment, it came over the radio, cars on two, uh, gunfire. What street was that, Jimmy, do you remember? Humboldt Ave. Humboldt Ave. Cars on two, yeah, cars on two, gunfight on, on uh, Humboldt Ave. And we turned, made a U-turn and got back there. We were there in 45 seconds. And the little girl, Tiffany Moore, was dead, stone cold dead. And uh, that's not the way we're supposed to live in this country. There aren't supposed to be guys firing guns in our neighborhoods. There aren't supposed to be uh, people getting stabbed. There aren't supposed to be women getting raped. And we're not going to, I'm going to make a list up of 50 or 100 of the worst gangsters in the city, whether they're uh, shooters, stabbers, whatever they are and they've already had long records, and part of one of my, my plan is we're gonna be visiting those guys quite regularly and relentlessly extracting them from the streets that we all want to use in safety. It'll be constitutional, it'll be within the framework of the law. No, it will really, honest to God. <laughs> It will be. It'll, it'll be totally constitutional, but I'm teaming up with some federal agencies and uh, the Sheriff's Department. Sheriff McDonald has been incredibly helpful to me. Joe's here. Joe's here. Hi, Sheriff. Sheriff McDonald has volunteered a ton of, of uh, assistance to our, our city. He's going to take our prisoners before these guys even get into a, a cell in Brockton. They're going to go straight to his... Uh, his facility in Plymouth, and he's going to pick them up and drive them there and take them to court and say goodbye to them there. They won't be bailed out inside your city where they walk out the door right on the same streets that they just got arrested on. They're going to be, they're going to be bailed out of Plymouth, uh, and it'll free up the officers that usually have to stay with them during the booking process. It'll also um, help the city with potential litigation if someone commits suicide in a cell. Cops aren't supposed to guard prisoners. We're supposed to get prisoners, but not guard them. And the, the sheriff has g generously offered all kinds of assistance to us, uh, as well as some other agencies that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take advantage of. The other plan that I hope works out, all right, so we got the, the, the 50 or 100 or however many there are, the bad guys, the real bad guys, the killers, okay? They're over there. There's still guys on the street that make it uncomfortable, that, that commit, uh, you know, quality of life offenses, uh, going to the bathroom on the sidewalk, uh, uh, staring people down, public drinking, uh, large congregations that we're afraid to walk by that make us get off the sidewalk and go around them. That's not going to happen if this little thing that I'm thinking of works out, and I think it will. In Lawrence, uh, we get a guy in here named Captain Kelly. Where are you, Captain Kelly? See that hand? You know what he did for the city of Lawrence? Come here, David, please. I had an idea in Lawrence, and it was to put together a motorcycle squad. And I put about 10 motorcycles on the street. Captain Kelly was the supervisor up front, a captain. A wagon followed that parade, and they went all through the city, the good parts and the bad parts. And they very, very uh, quickly set the tone for the bad, the bad people. Not the murderers, not those guys, but sort of the, uh, the broken window theory. You, you, you go after everything at the same time. And thanks to Captain David Kelly, we went from, uh, I think, about 800 arrests a year to 7,000 a year for the three years that we worked together. Um, he, he was a budget, he did the budget for us. When, when I got there, this is the guy that did the budget. He wanted out, he wanted to get on the street. And I said, I'll put you on the street, Captain, but you gotta still do the budget. I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> and, and I said, and Captain Kelly, get over here. I said, Captain Kelly, I don't, I don't really do good on budgets. I don't want you to owe any money, and I don't want you, us to turn any money back in. <laughs> Whatever you get, spend, which he did. But the caveat for him was he led the motorcycle squad, 
and I hope I can find a supervisor here that rides a bike and that is as energetic and, and honest as he is, and, and Brockton policemen are doing the same thing with a wagon following them. And uh, if we can do that, that's that group. The third component to what I want to try to do here is never forget the good kids, the kids that when their brothers or sisters are arrested uh, are good kids. They haven't gone the wrong way yet. And I want to extend uh, to my team an invitation to anyone involved in social services who will come with us when we're out in the street and as we make these arrests and after the uh, property is clear, go inside with a police officer probably and look for kids in need of services. Look for, look for children who haven't gone the wrong way yet and offer them every advantage that their agency can. I think that's a good, so it's, it's all I got right now. If it's not working, we're going to do something else. But uh, that's what I'm hoping to do and uh, I promise you this, this is a great honor, I'm not kidding about that. I will give you every ounce of my strength to try to make your city safer. And I've, if the policemen are listening in the city, uh, I'm an honest, fair guy. Uh, if you really like to work and then work a little harder, you're going to like me. Uh, if you're not a good guy, you're going to not like me. But I know there's very, very few, if any, of those people. And um, we're going to get along great. I respect the union. If there's a contract in place, I was a union rep when I was in Boston. When there's a contract, uh, that's the contract. I, I won't do anything. There'll be no chicanery, if that's a good word. Uh, involved with uh, with my interpretation of their contract. Uh, I, without them, we're just us. These are the people that are going to do it, not me. They have to be. They have to trust me. They have to know I have their back, and that I'm not looking to get them. I heard it. No, never mind. That's not. Never scratch that. Um, I think. I think that's about it. Uh, let me ask my wife. <laughs> that's all for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Mention? Mention that we're going to. Uh, Patty, everyone's invited back to, to a sandwich and a cup of tea. Okay. Right. Oh, I got I know. We don't have that budget. We don't have Kelly for the budget. Wait a minute. Yeah. Don't be. <laughs> What I'd like to say now is that you're all invited back to uh, a restaurant called Joe Angelo's. And I'd like to say that the city of Brockton is going to pay for everybody's meal. Wait, 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 wait. No. Where's Kelly? <laughs> you notice I said, you may notice I said I'd like to say that. I can't say that. But you're all still welcome to go back there and have a cup of coffee or a sandwich or whatever. And uh, the, maybe the mayor can take over. All right. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Uh, I think you can see why that I believe so deeply in Bob Hayden leading our police department and why I'm willing to fight to make sure that he will be the leader of the Broughton Police Department. And I ask you to join me at 6 o'clock in council chambers on Tuesday evening when the ordinance is heard in front of the council's ordinance committee to establish a civilian commissioner of police that will enable me to permanently appoint Bob Hayden to lead the Brockton Police Department. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you on Tuesday night.